No. Is it too early to talk about the 2017 general election? Well, as Kenyans mark the first year since the 2013 general election, it is argued that time is rife for a proper review of that poll. There are no words that would have adequately described the tension that had gripped Kenya at this specific moment exactly one year ago. All polling stations countrywide were closed and the results were streaming in. None of the top presidential candidates had reached the 50% plus one vote threshold. Anxiety was building up. Today, civil society and election observation groups say it's high time Kenyans reviewed last year's electoral processes. In other jurisdictions, elections are a way of life. They, you, they, you take them in your, you know, in your stride. So it's very frustrating when we have all this information, we know what's supposed to be done, we've made the recommendation, and the country has just kept quiet or shut up on issues of elections. We accepted and moved on. The question that has got to be asked now is how long will we accept and move on? The reality, these groups say, is specifically harsh on the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission and political parties. People in this country are not foolish. They have tolerated results that, did, that are not necessarily convincing. The question has got to be, will they... Will this be tolerated again in 2017? ABC, you remember this, you, you, you had talk about if we will disband it or not. I think this issue should have been settled by through the evaluation. When we are talking about political will, is it limited to these 349 individuals or as we have come to define them, the two or three horses that are participating in the race? What is the function of these other 14 million people. While the judiciary has been lauded for expediting the numerous electoral petitions, the Supreme Court ruling on the presidential appeal did not receive as much accolade. Was it fair or just to handle it within 14 days and actually excluding evidence uh, when getting the information itself was a challenge? Uh, what happens if we will be faced by you know, a similar situation in the, in the next uh, elections? Mm -hmm. The IEBC has itself recommended that voting in the next general election be spread over two days as opposed to just a single day. Whether this proposal is the answer to the many questions posed over Kenya's electoral processes remains to be seen. Asham Wilu, KTN, Nairobi. So exactly 12 months ago, I was in Gatundu preparing for the telling of votes after the March 4th general election. Let's now bring in a man who was arguably the busiest in this country at that particular time. That is Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission Chairman Ahmed Isaac Hassan. Karibu, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Now 12 months on, you've carried, you've uh, had a number of by-elections. Yeah. What can you say are the lessons from that? There has also been an election petition, presidential election petition. Mm -hmm. What would you say are the, the lessons from that election? I think the, the commission has learned, uh, as I said, uh, very important lessons after the elections. We've been able to uh, rectify some of the mistakes that were made during the elections. And if you watch the by-elections, we were able to train and deploy uh, all the technology that we had, both the electronic voter identification and the result transmission. They all worked 100%. And you saw elections uh, in real time, the results being announced uh, in real time, and the winners and, and the losers accepting defeat. So I think uh, we had time to prepare, we had time to train, we had time to de deploy. We didn't have that time in the, on, on 4th of March. Secondly, I think we have also learned a very important lesson in terms of uh, having to test technology before you deploy in a general election. Some of the technologies were, were, were new, they required to be tested, and that was not done properly because of the time constraints. Thirdly, I think the issue of uh, communicating with the, 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 the key stakeholders, especially the presidential candidates, about the mode of telling results in the bombers. I think brought uh, confusion. They, they didn't understand that we were doing our job. Some of them thought that they had to be there and do the work of the of the commission and tally before they could give uh, permission. 
And so I think in future we need to develop a very clear code of conduct and set of regulations which are published in advance on how election tallying and result transmission and announcement will be made, especially for presidential elections. Because in other elections like governors, senators, it's announced at the counties. Yeah. It's only presidential elections that is announced at the Nairobi. Is there anything that you would say the Electoral Commission in Kenya, IBC, needs to do to ensure that in 2017 there is no presidential election petition, come what may? You know, the, the law allows for any candidate who uh, is takes part in the, in the, in the election petition, in, sorry, in the election, to file a, for a petition. But actually, we hoped that if we all the technology had uh, worked very well, and I know for a fact my, myself, if the result transmission had worked 100%, the Prime Minister would have considered defeat. Yes. I know for that for a fact because I spoke to him several times, and I knew he was going to uh, consider defeat. But then there were doubts created because of the failure of the, the result transmission. So, to, to come back to your, to, your, to your question, it is to make sure that technologies which, which we deploy are foolproof and there's fallback position yeah. and that people have now full trust and faith in the technology and that people are able to see the results in good time, in real time, before we can give the official results later. And that will give them people time to concede defeat and now the country can move, for, move you, forward. You have talked about holding uh, the election separately at the county level and the national yes. uh, level. What value would that add to our elections? Uh, if you look at our neighboring countries, Tanzania, Uganda, uh, all African countries, no country in Africa, apart from Kenya and Sudan, hold elections, six or nine elections on the same day. And so what we are saying is that it may not be sustainable on both the staff and the commission and the country to have all elections on the same day. Some of them are very high stakes. Some of them are required to be done different times. Uganda, Tanzania, they hold their election for president two years before the parliament and then local government. Yeah. They stagger the elections. What we are saying is that from our experience as having managed the 4th of March elections, and even as voters, you could see the long lines if there's an 80% turnout, we are going to have the same challenges again. So it's time for us to think and have a serious debate whether we can again have the six elections or we can have national elections and county elections, presidential, parliamentary. I mean, there's, there are many ways of uh, staggering elections. Yes, chairman. We'll and also we want oh. to allow people to vote early. Yeah. The election officials, security personnel, so they can vote early and now do their work. Final question, Bona Chairman. Uh, code Coalition, the Minority Coalition Parliament have said severally that IBC needs to be disbanded yes. and another electoral commission formed before 2017. What would you say to that? And, and what, what is your reaction to the ODM election that was held last Friday? Well, uh, supposed to be held, yeah? To answer the first question, I think uh, it's, it's quite unfortunate that uh, when you have an election, there are winners and losers and uh, they lost the election, for, especially for president. By the way, they are not complaining about governor's election or senate election or members of parliament. The only complaint is about presidential elections. And so we are saying that they, they had gone to court, they, uh, the Supreme Court overruled them, and I think and they, they accepted the results. And I think it's not a good time or a good thing for a nation to be disbanding its electoral commissions every five years. You need to allow institutions to mature, to grow, to, to learn from their mistakes and project forward. Like now we are doing post-election evaluation. Not just to look back, but also to prepare how we can do a better job in 2017. So I want to uh, uh, appeal to the core leadership to come, to, to come down on their, on their rhetoric and allow and support the commission to do a better job. If they have got any uh, criticism that they have, any complaints, we are willing to listen, sit down with them and hear them out. But I think it's not fair to keep on hammering this point that we're going to disband the commission because it actually demoralizes the staff and people are actually now living, living the commission. Yes. And the, the last question was ODM. Yeah. The commission can conduct elections for anybody who requests the, the, the commission. We need election for the judicial, uh, for the law society of Kenya, we are electing the officials. We do election for the Kenya Red Cross Society, for schools, for institutions the, like the JSC. So a political party can request the commission 
to conduct the elections or to so provide technical support. Unfortunately, ODM never uh, uh, asked us to help them. Uh, of course, if you are asking for our disbandment, you can't ask for our help to do your elections. <laughs> I, I suppose they, they, they didn't you, want Mr. to do Chairman. that. Thank you. But still, we are willing to support them and give them technical support and give them all the resources of the Commission to help them conduct a credible and a free and fair election. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Chairman of the Independent Election and Boundaries Commission, Ahmed Isaac, as an always.